Welcome, John. Good afternoon. Grand final week. Oh, here we go. Uh, let's hope this, this Wednesday evening is your finest. You've been strong this year, <laughs> be but really you've still good. got a little bit left in you. Oh, I've got a couple of pages of notes to roll <laughs> right through here. Kay, Did you have Lockie New in your All Australian team? No. No. Do you have any regrets in not? No, not no. at all. No. Not at all. The Brownlow's another discussion. Okay. We might, go, we might have, there, we might have some there time. Now? Well, Zach Butters was was my favourite. He was the one that uh, I thought would be able to take take it home, especially with the way that he was going to finish the season. And like so many <laughs> throughout yeah. the count, there there was some there was some games that I thought he definitely would have pulled in that he didn't. There mm-hmm. were games where I thought he might have got zero and he got got a one or a two. It's just it's just unbelievable, isn't it, the way that it it unfolded for for some players that have limited games yet got maximum votes was uh, was quite outstanding. Mm. Uh, I think in and so I look at. The one, the one take I, from one takeaway from Port Adelaide is that Jason Horn Francis will win a Brownlow at some stage. You think so? If he gets fit, if, if Kane gets the runners on him, no, because the some of the games where he did poll, mm. he, they weren't huge games in terms of numbers, but he, but the way that he plays mm. and that that power, so his twenty is worth a thirty-five. So if he has twenty and two, he's getting two to three votes. Yep. In in most games that, yeah, that he plays, so therefore. And he will improve that possession output as well. That will become 25 plus two goals. Yeah, I, I came away. The biggest uh, thought thing that I came away with was the youngsters that polled. Tom and Green. It, so Tom Green, we got Errol, we got Noah Anderson who yep. polled a lot of votes. Yep. We got Butters, we got Rosie early 20s, we got Horn Francis. Sam Walsh has got 30 before in a Brownlow. <laughs> and he, you know, if he continues on what he's doing with a full preseason, he's going to get a lot of votes. Well, his reputation's grown too over this final series. Yeah. And that, that so, plays a big part, I think, so in. There's only so many that can go around. Caleb Sarong is a polar of votes. Brayshaw's mm. the same. So the, the midfield, you know, there's going to, of that crop, there's going to be a lot that goes to them. And and the Bont misses out. And uh, he, yeah. misses, he misses out because of the losses to Hawthorne and West Coast, Agreed. I think. So that that's what hurts. Hurts the bond and not having the Brownlow around his and neck. And I didn't even mention Dacos in his season. No, that's right. Uh, well, that's right. <laughs> that's right. But what about that performance, right? I thought by round 18, 19, he would have yeah. had the 31. He had, yeah. had, had the 28. And to hang in there to the final two games of the, the season pretty much was was just phenomenal. It was amazing how many times the, I guess, the Robin in the Batman and Robin uh, – Duo cost each other. Viney and Petrarca. Mm. Lib both polled really well, which I'm, I'm pleased that he did, but uh, cost the bond. Um, Horn well, Francis and cost, Rosie. Cost Rosie. Well, in, and in some ways they didn't. Yeah, in some ways they did because the round round four, Horn Francis got the one and Butters got zero. And then he got round eight, he got a one and Butters got zero. Mm. So Warner and Goulden. I, I thought Warner yeah. probably polled more than I thought he would get. He polled well early, and then his his season started rapid. Going back through the, you know, his name was in that all Oz squad for that that first yep. part of the season, and then it just sort of dropped away. He's a he's part. a magnificent looking player. The way he moves, beautiful player. Just mm. got to do more with the football mm. when he's got it. Jared, I need. I, I've been sitting on this. I've been stewing on this. I know. I can know. You, can I, you let me go? As soon as as soon as I saw it, I thought I'm going to oh. rein you in. I'm going to rein <laughs> you in for five seconds just while I report this. <laughs> Pre-season 2017, Nank, Caddy, Prestia, Townsend, and didn't they have a grand final and a half? Graham, not mm. a bad group of additions mm. too. Yep. If anybody can beat that, and uh, let's exclude the 10-year rule that was exploited uh, by the Kangaroos back in 1974-5, but that in this era was uh, a great get as well. Righto, off you go. All right. So Callum Mills is injured badly. Uh, on Mad Monday, and uh, I, I've been so frustrated by this for a, for a long time. You are a professional footballer for the time that you are a professional footballer, mm. okay? So when you are contracted to be that, you need to act like that. Now, this is a guy that's co-captain of the footy club, a guy that in 2018 broke his foot playing NFL in 2018, and now he's done a serious injury. Now, you could speak to that, but what I've read, it's it's, it's nasty, and whether he's right for round one remains to be well, seen. Well, it's up to 12 months. Yeah, well, they can't win the premiership without him. So, so – that he is the defensive Josh Dunkley that Brisbane have. Brisbane aren't in a grand final if it's mm. not for Josh Dunkley. Sydney will be the same if it's not for Callum Mills. And I've said this many times. Now, often these incidents don't result 
in injury. Uh, so Sydney Stack doing a stupid backflip off a cliff face landing in a small pond of water last year in the preseason. I was critical of. But I he missed that one. Didn't get injured. So Luckily no one, he didn't. So no one cares about it. Uh, Isaac Heaney does this stupid wakeboarding sort of thing in a pond at his farm and doesn't doesn't get injured at the time. I'm critical of it. And John Longmire comes out, the coach of Sydney, and, and defends it off the back of that criticism. He says, you've got to be mindful through these times on having really strong opinions of what people are and aren't doing and how they're coping. Now, it was during COVID, of course. Losing players to injury in the offseason is always upsetting. Uh, sorry, that's on the back of... So it's just on the Longmire one, he said, uh, we just need to take a deep breath. I'm pretty confident Isaac knows where the line is. He grew up on that farm since he's been able to walk. He's been an outdoor adventures guy. Well, Ollie Wines was that as well. He grew up water skiing. It didn't stop him from dislocating his shoulder and ruining his season, which I was critical of at the time. So that was Longmire on Heaney. Well, Sydney's tune has changed on the back of Mills. Their statement said, Callum is our captain and he's an important member of the squad. We are extremely disappointed this injury has occurred. He's equally disappointed, as you can imagine, but he's recovering well. So is it only an issue if they get injured? So is it okay for these? Look, I'm not to... with you on the on the you know the extreme sports stuff, but I'm with you on, on the Mad Monday. If the drinks in the brains out, and to lose a player in those circumstances is yes, it's un you know it's it's one in a hundred, one in a thousand probably, but it's still it's just still still shouldn't happen. Mm. So what? But what is that? What is allowed and what is isn't allowed? So if you say it's okay to water ski, is it okay? to snow ski? Is it okay to base jump? Is it okay to skydive or bungee jump? So the, the, I, don't know what, I don't know what it is. What is okay and what isn't okay? I think you're a professional footballer until you're not. And, and you can do that. You can surf big waves. You can snow ski. You can wakeboard. You can jump off a cliff. But if you get injured for the time that you're out, your club shouldn't be forced to pay your contract. Well, that's a different, that's a different argument. Um, what about riding motorbikes? Well, all that you should. I think that's like, incredible. Motorbike risky. to work and and well, and mountain biking as well. Mm. So Paul Marsh, when Wines was injured, I was really critical of the time. He said, "This is about balance. We preach balance as an industry. We've talked about mental health being the biggest issue facing our game. They need a release away from football." Ollie Wines has been water skiing since he was a young kid. They don't need a release. They're professional footballers. They get twenty weeks off a year. You don't need to release by going water skiing. Do that when you retire, or if you do it and you get injured, you just shouldn't get paid. So I, it's a frustration. Um, I, I think we are semi-professional as an, as an industry. I, when There's no way we're professional. I saw a college kicker today who just finished his degree, came up to me at the hotel. He just finished his degree as a punter in the NFL. He said, you're so right on Mills. He said, if that happens in the NFL, you're done. Your mm. contract is ripped up. You are done. And we've seen many examples of that. He's ruthless. So don't give me this rubbish that players need a life. You're a professional footballer. The AFL PA has got to be stronger, as do the clubs. This may be a talking point. I think, you know, the commentary around Lou Mills losing the captaincy is fair, and I think players at this time got to be got to be really careful. So to all those guys that uh, say go body surfing in on the Gold Coast, I mean, you can break your neck body surfing, mm, and you can break your neck diving into a pool. Yeah. So I, I get. So where, where do you draw the line on those things? Body surfing, surfing. Mm. Uh, which most people that live on the Gold Coast do just as this part of life. But guys in Sydney do just as a part of life. Yeah, well, I think – and, and it's dangerous. And there is da more dangerous things than others. Body surfing in, in small swell doesn't seem to be a big issue for me, and I haven't seen too many players get injured doing that, and it's good for recovery. But if you're jumping off a cliff doing a bat flip like Sydney Stack, if mm. you're wakeboarding behind a boat in a very shallow pond like Heaney was – if you're playing basketball and doing ridiculous dunks like Kerno ruined two seasons at Carlton doing, then you can do that and you can take the risk. But I don't think the club should have to cough up their wage whilst they are out injured. And if that's 12 months for Mills, uh, too bad. It's a big 12 months, isn't it? Oh, I mean, I've geez, heard six a months. Out. And it's massive out. I mean, the Swans have got a, you know, people keep talking about their back line. The Swans' biggest issue is their midfield. Mm. They, the, their midfield has gone from a strength to a weakness, and that's given Errol Gould and, and Chad Warner and Mills and potentially Heaney sometimes, but uh, they need to bolster that area. And to, to lose Mills opens them up big time in an area they just can't be opened up. He's in. such an important player for them. If you want to have your say, I, I understand there's differing views on this one three hundred seven three six seven three six, but we are semi professional with the way that we allow our players to behave off the field and the amount of leave we give our players so that they do get up to things like this. 
and take the risk in doing so. All right, John, I love speaking to the people on the Harcourts open line. There's a couple wanting to have their say. Paul is in North Melbourne. Callum Mills has ruined his shoulder, Paul, wrestling on Mad Monday. I'm upset. What's your thoughts? I, I absolutely, and I really do, Kane, to be honest, but I absolutely couldn't agree more with you. I um, I actually stopped playing footy because I run my own business and couldn't afford to get injured. So uh, when you look at it from that perspective, it's ridiculous. And if you can't front up fit and healthy, then uh, we're not paying you. I reckon mm. I couldn't agree more with you. Go on, you, Paul. Thanks for your thoughts. Jono, you've got a different take, I think. No, no, I've got, I've, my take on it is that it's, it's just on Callum. I don't get upset with it because at the end of the day, he's made the decision to wrestle one of his teammates, having a bit of fun. And we mm. don't know the extent of that wrestle. You might know a little bit more than, than what I do, but ultimately it was just probably a bit Inocuous, of fun between. Yeah. And he didn't even realise how bad the the injury was mm. for, for a couple of days, unless he hit it for but it's it. not but tennis, hide Jono, it for a couple of days. It's not tennis. You, you're not, it's not an individual sport. Yeah, that, that would be fine if it was Rafa Nadal. But you fought for 17 years to try and win a premiership with your blood, sweat and tears and they can't win it without him. They, and, that's but, how important but that, he is. I'm, I'm not, I'm not chowing away from not having fun on mad Mondays and trips away and all that sort of stuff where, you know, you get lucky at times, you get mm. unlucky mm. at times. So I'm, I'm not shying away from that, but the fact that it's just, for me, it's just on Callum. So now that's happened. If he comes back and his career ends in a couple of years because he's shoulder stuffed, well, that's, that's just on him to, to have to live and deal with. I don't get upset with, with these scenarios no, because no. I put it, always put it back on that. And, it, and yeah, he's an important player for the Sydney Swans. I, I understand that, that side of it, but you, you, you make that decision to, in, in that, in that moment. Could you legislate against it to make players less likely to participate in risky activities? So do you legislate against, do you take Mad Mondays away completely? Because there's been tens of thousands of them around the country over yeah. the last, over the last month and a half. And does it become a, a situation where you don't have Mad Monday at, well, it's not, at all? It's not a silly thought because footy trips were, in your time, the thing. Like every year, footy trips, groups of 20, 30, mm. um, they're not a thing anymore. Footy, footy trips don't happen. Well, they're, not, they're, they're, they're still they're not, a thing, but they're but not spoken about They used anymore. to be a club thing where you would raise money, you would have a chaperone, you would have staff that would go to look after the players, and the club was in on it. The club has now washed their hands of footy trips and say, look, if you want to go away, we've, we've got nothing to do with it. Our fingerprints aren't on it. So maybe it just has to be adjusted. Where I, th I think if there's a place for everyone getting together, the players getting together after a hard season, win, lose, or draw, however it works out for you and your footy club, get together and put a full stop to the, that season. But maybe there had just, maybe there just has to be a time frame on it that, you know what, boys, we're getting together for three hours. That's it. And then after that, you go and you, you go on your own. No, I, I don't know the answer. I'm not sure there is an answer, to be honest, John. You can ban it and it would just go underground. Well, of course it would. Uh, Mills will miss significant match payments, so he does get penalised, Kane. That's no, more from Berwick. No, he won't, Nick. I don't think uh, he'd be on the match payments no, he's contract. On guarantee, he's on a guaranteed contract. <laughs> I can guarantee you that one. I can one, guarantee yeah. you that. John, let's move on to your key five keys to Saturday's grand final. It's going to be a great game of footy. <laughs> it really is. It's going to – the build-ups uh, – well and truly underway. And, uh, why, and why are you confident to? it's going to be a great game? Because I thought last what year was going to be a great mm. game was over that's at 10 a, minutes, mate. That's a good point, Jared. mate. It is a very good point you make, Jared. You never and know. That, but that was, you don't. It's, that, that, and that was surprising to us all. Because Such a psychological game that when the when you're psychologically beaten, you can fall mm. away dramatically, whether mm. it's 10 minutes to go or 15 minutes to go or 20 minutes into the first I quarter. Think, I think it will be because... Brisbane are a hardened team ready for this moment. Yep. And they've they've set up that way. They've they've publicly put that out there now as a as a football club that this is their moment with the experience that they've got. Coming up against a team that plays the MCG so, so well, plays a great brand of footy that's excited that that can get the ninety five thousand yep. Collingwood fans up and about and add that layer to it. So that's why I think it'll build up to yep. what will be a pretty good game of footy. We talk about the midfield battle as, as number one. So the Pies' first layer, I think, will be Dugowie, Mitchell, and Dacos. They'll be up against Neil Dunkley and probably Berry, I think, early on so in, you the, think in, in the contest. Berry. Dacos will, you think Dacos, what, firstly, you can do Berry in a sec. Yep. I'll do Dacos. You think Dacos will start in? I think I think he'll start in. So they've got the, the hardness of Dugowie, Mitchell in the contest, which I think is really important for Collingwood in the early part of this of this game. Where's Pendlebury? Win first Just position. Coming first change. So, yeah, and that's... Yes. And that's where, and then Dacos with the class. I still think you need that in the in in the first quarter, in the first five to ten minutes of this game. Get his hands on ball, get him going, get his first touch in a granny, and off he mm. off he goes. The second layer, 
for me is Pendlebury, Elliott, Lipinski and Crisp. Now, Elliott does play centre bounce. He does come in, he plays centre bounce early and yep. then floats forward and he, you know, just certain stages of each quarter, you'll find him around around the footy. The second layer for Brisbane is Robinson, McCluggage, Rayner and Bailey. So they're the ones that get up around the the contest. And then the wings are probably the most important positions, I think, in this in this midfield mm. for both teams. Sidebottom and Dacos and what they've been able Advantage to do. Advantage Collingwood. Year. Advantage Collingwood versus Zorko and Fletcher. So a real youngster whose first mm. final was excellent. And then you've got Zorko who's got got the experience and and hopefully he plays a good brand of footy up against side bottom who's consistently good and Dacos who all Australian wingmen. So at, at his advantage, at his advantage, Collingwood, that at his is, advantage at the G for Collingwood who played the wing so well. I wouldn't be surprised if um, Berry ended up on side bottom on a wing. He's played a fair yep. bit of wing. This year and uh, one on one stuff, so. and so throw McCluggage into the McCluggage into, comes in, in, comes into yeah. that, yeah, into of that the on ball stuff there with the depth. I think advantage Brisbane just just with the the overall depth. Now the the A team that you've started, I think they've got a bit more power and speed mm. than what Collingwood have. When you, if you can throw Rayner and Bailey through there, then that may question Collingwood a little bit. If they're up against Lipis, Lipinski, if he's throw, flowing through there. And possibly, but Pendlebury's a hard one because what yes, he doesn't have that, but he's so quick in mind and the way that he and he's breaking records last week at the club still, so he's he's doing everything can right. Can you give me your first wave for the pies again? First wave was Dagoe Mitchell and Dacos. See, I think Jack Crispy, Crispy mm. Chicken, yep. is uh, his form at the moment is is quite exceptional. So he he's the, right. he's my smoky for the Norm Smith. Wow, we're going early with Crispy, like it, and um, but that and that but that's a good advantage, isn't it? So you might take. Whether you take Mitchell out of there early and throw Crisp in there, like I think Dagoe has to start, or whether it's Dacos out early to get him playing behind the contest and feeding him so on that outlet ball yep. to uh, to push forward. But it's a it's a great battle. It's it's a close. How do you one see the ruck battle? I mean, the, the the rucks get so much focus, but ultimately, mm. you know, they hit the hit out to advantage ratio. Exactly. As uh, Horney says yeah. about you know one in five plays a big role in this, but, and it's the big O versus Cameron and Cox. Mm. Uh, when we when we sort of you know nut it all out, and it's it's the impact that the big O can have. His final series has been excellent, yeah, and he's been able to turn some games himself. So, but it has a big left hand but handball. Has his Mason, Mason Cox, Mason Cox has done he's, well. He's, he's done very well, um, and he's another one that now Craig McRae goes to. He's probably their number one in terms of their first choice ruckman. Cameron maybe pushing a little bit more forward and playing off off the bench. So that leads to the coach's box, I think, as as number two or the bench wherever McRae McRae sits. Because you're starting matchups, there's probably four or five that are critical to this to this contest. Maynard versus Cameron, I think, is one that um, you know could come could come to light. Mm-hmm. Murphy versus Hipwood is the is the second is the second one. Elliot versus Starsevich at the other end of the ground. Um, is that a concern? Because well, then I had Cameron and Cox versus the Big O. We've already mm-hmm. discussed them. Starsevich, according to Ahoyne, is has an impact the games for a mm-hmm. long time. Yeah, well, it's this. That's, he's going to play that role. He's going to be deep back. He's yeah. going to take one of them. I think Elliot's um, probably the matchup they'll look at. McQuarrie versus maybe McKenna and try and stop that run negatively and then hurt him going the other way. McQuarrie's a high work rate. And Hill versus Wilmot, which mm, which beauty. could work out to be an absolute beauty. But then it's the first to respond to a matchup that's not working. I think that's the critical part to this. So if, if Hill's on top of Wilmot, mm. will he throw McKenna across there straight away? And not allow and and get Wilmot a different task yep. instantly, or if it's the other, or if it's the other way around. If if Wilmot's on top of Hill, do you throw him a query there quicker to to restrict the output of the run and drive that that can be created? So I think there's a there's a couple of things that the coaches and who responds first on matchup could potentially take an advantage in the first half of this game. Who would you prefer to be coaching? Question without notice, Jono. Who would I prefer to be coaching Which this team? weekend? Oh, Craig McRae. You prefer yeah. to be coaching the Pies? I, th- I think so. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a tough one. That's I know, I've, you know, without notice. Um, both teams are exceptional, and I did tip Brisbane at the start of the year. I thought they were in a really good window mm. to to be successful this year. Whether they win or not, we we wait and see. But I just like, I think I like what the what the Pies do, and I like a lot of their, you know, their, a lot of what their players do. Have you say joining the conversation with us, Brad Johnson, in the studio for his observations and five keys to the grand final. Stephen Quarterman has just tweeted the hottest VFL AFL grand final on record. He's 31.3 degrees, as you mentioned, Jared, in yep. 2015. In 1987, it reached 30.7. I yeah, remember Bradley flying that day. It is, um, it's going to be 29 degrees forecast for this mm. Sunday. Uh, big influence on the game, the result, do you think? Well, it's one of the, I did have it. I did have the weather only because 
only because of more preparation, I think, from a Collingwood point of view. I think I think Brisbane go into this knowing exactly their hydration strategies and all those sort of things. In I game, hope they don't in- bring out the drips, Jono. There's one of the <laughs> more <laughs> no, disgraceful, more, one, one of the more disgraceful things <laughs> that the AFL that. allowed was those drips yeah. in the early days and the impact that that They're had well on their performance. Well and truly packed away, I would have thought. Remains to be seen, mm. and there, so, there is a question who'd mark. Who they beat that year with the drips? Well, they beat Collingwood a couple of times. That's right. And they beat, yeah, they beat us a number of times in some big finals, yeah. big prelim finals. Thought so, that might have been a bit of personal. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, I thought. I thought, I thought it had a little I bit of that. Dodgy. Didn't it? I think it's, I think well, it's absolutely dodgy. But I think for this, for this game, it's more the. It could be the hydration talk becomes more around the Collingwood and their their internals about what they're what they're going to do, and does it change the pie style potentially? Early on, or do they play a more controlled game early, trying well, because to because of the say, because of the heat? Well, I, I don't know, Jared. Do mm. do they do they change their style a little bit based on based on this? Because they don't want to run out of run out of tickets. And I think it's a conversation. I think I changed, they, you know, if I was Greg McRae, was to tell the blokes, factor fifty. Get on your nose, any potential <laughs> ball spots, make sure you don't, don't get burned. Don't put it on your forehead so That's it runs it. in your eyes. That's it. Yeah. Don't get on your hands. Um, yeah, exactly. Collingwood's it, a good, it Collingwood, is a fit, Collingwood is a fit team, though. They are a hard, hardened team mm. who had a really strong, demanding preseason. They run as hard as yep. anyone. So. But I think out of the two teams, Brisbane are more com- would be more yeah. comfortable with the conditions than what Collingwood will be at mm. this particular time. I was standing outside on Sunday. It was mm. 18 degrees. Sun was on my back and I'm sweating it up a treat. So, mm. you, you, know. dropped a, you have dropped a f- bit of fitness though, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just got I'm Alex. I'm not running marathons at the moment, but I'm, I'm okay still, Jonathan. Yeah, you're looking good, Jono. Uh Alex just dropped out. We've got a comment from Malcolm who's with us in Adelaide. You want to speak about the grand final and Craig McRae. Malcolm, welcome back. Hello, Kane. Two points, mate. Uh, for all the love Towards McRae, Craig McRae, justifiably so. But if Collingwood had lost last week after the go he had sat on the bench for the last 10 minutes, I reckon it would have uh, dropped away dramatically. And I totally agreed with your comments about the goey the other day. And for me, he still owes Collingwood big time for 18, where instead of competing with McGovern, he wanted to be the hero and get the cheap goal out the back. It, his career is fascinating to me, Jordan Ngoi, because if you look uh, at what he is capable of doing versus what he has produced, it is underwhelming. And then every now and then he pulls out a performance like that. And look, he's got better the longer his career's gone on, but he's 27, 28 years of age. Compare him to his contemporaries like a Dangerfield at the same how age. Old was Dusty? How old was Dusty Pelly. when he really got younger, going? Younger than that. 2018, Ngoi was the most talked about person in grand final week, who was going to match up on the goey? Mm. Eagles didn't have anybody to match up on the go. He was the absolute man, had a really good season, had a good finals campaign, and that's why he he actually dominated the previews of everybody mm. in the attention. And in the end, um, who was it picked him up? He's a um, uh, Fox footy commentator now. His name is just Will slip. Schofield. Will Schofield picked him up mm. and did a pretty reasonable yeah, pretty job. So Martin was twenty. So Martin was twenty five. And people say, "Oh, you're hard on the go." I'm like, "Hang on, if you give the talent to a player like that, mm. like Petrarca's got the talent, Bontempelli's got the talent. Dan- these Dangerfield's got eight all Australians. So Dusty was twenty five when he's in twenty seven. He's thirty two. Yeah, okay. So yeah. Well, that was what he produced. Dustin Martin's another good one. Like he has never been an all Australian. Mm. He's never been a premiership player. He's never been a best and fairest. In fact, I don't know if he's ever finished top five. His greatest accolade is winning the goal kicking in, in 2018. He has underperformed with what he's capable of. Now, having said that, I haven't seen a performance as good as that for a while in a, in a final. And if he produces Last that, week, third yeah. clearances. And if he produces And maybe this is his, maybe this similar, is his period. No coach. one's going to care, but I'm still not ready to- still, No, you've still got to care about- what has happened previously in the setup behind it, the but commentary that go with it. That's, that's okay. You're more, you're a le- if, you, if you are an influential player like that, mm. and he like they don't win if he didn't play. Like, I remember like Roger James in the 2004 prelim final was unbelievable. And if he didn't perform like that, we don't have a premiership. So you are forever grateful for a performance. I just think, I, I look at like the reaction that. when they won the game last week and him running off the, off the bench. That said more to me. You think he's changed about a lot. Jordan than, <laughs> yeah. than anything else. Anything than he, um, his skill and his and the way that he plays the game. That showed me that he's the first up. time I've seen him really go to the team and just go wow. Man, mm. this is this is us. And that that was that was it for me. I just went wow. This this guy's set now. The next three or four years could be unbelievable because of what 
his investment is, I think, is in the team as a whole rather than just being, you know, Jordan and where he's at and what he's doing and, and all those things. They do seem to it. have an amazing buzz in that team, yeah, Kane. No doubt about it. Just all year you've seen it. I think the coach has been obviously uh, magnificent in building that. I think the captain's been significant in building that. It takes everybody to buy in, but whatever he's selling – they're buying. They're hmm. definitely buying it, and that's been the case all year. They they don't yep. dwell on mistakes. There's a positive mindset. They smile when they enter the ground. They look like they're enjoying themselves. They get around each other. So that that's a intangible that a lot of premiership teams have, and it's a credit to Collingwood for standing by Degoe. I wouldn't have. I would have traded mm. him. I absolutely would have traded him, and that would have been the wrong call. So, look, they haven't made too many wrong decisions, as Jared highlighted off the top in the last couple of seasons. What else have you got your so eye on? So is the MCG a factor? Jared, Jared, no, not I'm only so, but Jared, what I've done, 90, mate, what 90 I'm, square meters. I get that. I one and a half meters on, on, on width, two meters on it. length. But all our all our home grounds grounds were an advantage. We we knew that. Was it more a mental advantage than than anything else? Possibly it was, and it was. Uh, and I know they don't train there and all those sort of things, which we did on our home decks back in the day. But I just went back the last two years. So 2020, this year in particular, they played 14, 11, and three. Last year they played 16, 13, and three. So in total, 30, 14, and six. So they're their their form is unbelievable. Where you've got the Brisbane Lions who have played there six times for one five in that in that two year period, but the last game at Marvel was an interesting one yep. because both team Collingwood had twenty five shots, Brisbane had twenty nine shots. One hundred to one twenty four was the was the final score. But statistically, it was even in the key stats that mm. don't doesn't matter what ground you're playing mm. at. They were, they were they were actually nothing, even nothing to play for that day, and they rested a couple. Didn't well, they? yes. But in but and it was more contested possession even clearance spot on even across the board. So then it comes down to what's going to happen at either end defensively and in an attacking nature that can, I, I tell can you potentially get you across the one line. One matchup that didn't work that night was Mitchell to Neil. So don't expect mm. that will happen. He absolutely ran rings around him, and you saw on Brownlow yeah. night he got the, the three votes. So, so McKenna that, had twenty six running off that night, for example, off off half back, and that's maybe something that now from a structural point of view, Collingwood might lock away with a McQuarrie, for example. To mm. to not allow that to to occur again. Cameron kicked his four. Danner and Hipwood kicked six between them. That night it was McStay and Mycheck. They kicked four, but Mycheck had five shots, two goals, three. So mm. it was sort of even in terms of output from the tall. So what are the smalls going to be able to do on this MCG? John, what else have you got your magnifying glass on ahead of the grand final? Well, it's more around I think what's happening at um, with North Melbourne and the and the assistance that they're going to receive from from the AFL now, oh, that would have got your goat up, John. Well, you know I've been sort of big on that. If you if you dig the hole, then yeah. it's up to you to, to fill, fill it. it in and 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 get yourself out the other side. There's been some examples over the last couple of years of sides that have been in a in a little bit of a hole that have managed to draft the right talent and show a window of opportunity to push push forward. Now I thought North Melbourne over the last couple of years have got some really good players in there and yep. and a couple of their key midfielders have gone to the level of expectation. I thought they had an actual base to start to fill the hole in over the next couple of years to get it uh, to mm. a reasonable position to start fighting for finals again. So therefore I wasn't huge on the fact that they needed assistance to, to do this assistance that they'll trade away anyway. And what that actually looks like for them as a football club comes back to once again, if they trade it away or they, they mess up their first round draft picks, then all of a sudden you know, we're, we're talking about the same things again in two yep. or three years time. So the fact that there's assistance there, it's, it goes onto the club. It goes onto the list manager straight away that you just cannot mess this, mess, mess this up. And I know that's, upsets that's, the reality, gonna... that's the reality of building lists, Jared. Because... I, yeah, it is. I, I know upsets happen, Jono, but I'll give you the score in round 22. North Melbourne were 132, Suns were 97. Mm. And that game was pretty impressive. And, uh, so I, I thought it just on the back of that that may have uh, curtailed the AFL to some degree. Yeah, and I agree. And and I yeah, I think we Marky both did this game. Marky hit nine, did he? Yeah, he did. It was it was excellent. Yeah. And that's where they've got. That's what. I, that's my point is the fact that yeah they've been down for a period of time, but they've also had some wins in that in those moments as well. And and the reality is they've got their they've got an excellent coach in. They'll build some good assistance around that. They'll get their development will become stronger. But they've got some serious class on their list now. So Yeah, they've got to get the a defender. I'll be going to St Kilda and try and edge out one of their defenders. Howard's probably the, the key target mm. there. They've got to find someone. Well, they have to now that Mackay's walking. Yeah. yeah. Of course they do. Mike, and and um they've got an ACL injury to uh, Griffin Lowe. Griffin and what, Lowe, and what yeah. they do with Goldstein also now. Well he's gone. You know, going to depart the yeah. club. So 
What do you th- what do you make of Gil's comment about that it's all compromised and clubs have got academy picks and father sons and I think Jared's got a, a view on this which I'm keen. Well, I've got to a hear. yes no question. I'll give you an early yes no question mm. for it, uh, Jono. Uh, Gil's response to both Scott and Lyon, uh, their criticism of the North Melbourne assistance package lacked logic because the next gen academy and father son picks are not extra picks which have been granted to North Melbourne. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So, but... I mean, you can't compare the two I, because I, I get the one argument. is a priority of a pick. I mean, you go up the list a, t- a bit or you've got the access to them, but it's not an extra three picks at the end of the first round. And I get the argument thrown out at me all the time around Jamara and the and the fact that the dogs are able to secure Jamara, mm. but every club, if I'm not wrong, and please pick me up on this, but the next gen was an AFL... It was. AFL thing. So... It was a square up for the Swans and Brisbane Academies. So it was just part of the it was just part of the the system. Yeah. So the Bulldogs, yeah, it, it worked out well for them as it has for other clubs in the past as well mm. in regards to either next gen or father son Quiner. or however it however it worked out to be. So that's why it was being rorted though. In what and that's way? why they changed it. In what way? Well, it was supposed to be for people who for for young blokes who weren't going to be part of the AFL system mm. that had sort of some heritage issues or didn't speak uh, Astro- uh, English as their first language. So who's that on, though? Is that on the well, AFL for the, not? Of course it was. Yeah. I mean, the, all, the, all the clubs did was exploit it, as they're supposed to do. That's right. Isaac Quainer came through for um, for Collingwood and Jamara Eugle Hogan, who I assume was playing football at six years of age, like uh, most kids in Victoria. He, he, he's not an addition to mm. the, the pool. He was just part of the pool. That's but right. He, he qualified, I assume, that's, for Indigenous that's, that's heritage. That's my point, is yeah. that – the, now the, this is an addition to what the pool is, yeah. and that's a, that's a, that's a good way of putting it, Jared. Because you look at now what North Melbourne could potentially do with this, which is which is great for them. Now it's been been ticked off, yeah. but ultimately I wouldn't have got to that point uh, with them. And I can understand the frustration for coaches like Chris Scott because they refuse to rebuild. They they refuse to do it. So John Longmire refuses to rebuild at Sydney. Yet you've got other clubs because so and their strategies worked for them. Yeah, but, but the, it's a. You could argue it's a cop out rebuilding because you get five years to go down the bottom. There's no pressure. You get all the access to talent, and then you chuck in the extra picks that they're going to get. Where you've got Chris Scott going, hang on, I've had no draft picks, and I'm doing my best to get through on the back of um, you know smart recruiting and and looking at other options that we can take. Mm. Yes, there's an advantage with where they're situated, and there's an attraction there, but we're not getting the picks or like. Koshy says it put out, we're not rebuilding. Mm. Like, what, what, what have they ever had? They haven't had that number one draft pick put out late ever. Mm. Like they're not getting any free picks. It's, it's just, it's ridiculous. I look at what Adelaide have done. Four years ago, they were in the exact same position as North. Yep. That's why we and talk they about have West Coast. Their way out of it. That's why we talk about West Coast and the first selection this year because it's it's critical for their list. Now, if they don't take the number one kidney, he becomes a superstar, but they get two picks. For it, and those kids mm. go on to have 200 game careers, and they're not the out and out superstars, but they're being great for the West Coast Eagles. That's an important decision to make. Okay, now John, because- I, I, I suspect over in the West, they're taking the number one pick mm. unless they get two picks in the top 10. Yep. Would you, would you, I would take two in the top 10. I would yep. take two in the top 10. Only because you've got to you've got to work out what's best for you and the longevity of your football club. That's part of what we're talking about. That doesn't allow the hole to be dug too deep. Yep. They're in one at the moment, but how do they start filling that? Filling it with a kid that potentially will come home in two years is not the answer for the West Coast Eagles. And that's what I'm talking about in regards to smart list management, smart administration that allows your club to build in the right fashion. So you're not asking for or in a position to mm. to put the hand out for, for assistance because it's on you and your decision-making as a football club. It's it's so important these days.